All right, good morning. It's Thursday, Friday Eve of Super Bowl weekend. And we're getting ready to rock and roll here today. So every day when you code, you know, you're creating what we call basically in your mind a sprint task list. What is a sprint task list? Okay, just sound it out exactly what it says. Sprint means to run fast, right? So a sprint task list is something we want to do quickly. <laughs> Uh, a task list is you have a list of tasks that you need to do. It's like a honeydew list. Are you, are you guys with me on this? So what's our sprint task list today? Well, we have no code. Um, we don't have a mystery button, so let's get this done. Let's get this mystery button in. Are you with me? So right now we need to get a mystery button done. That would complete our GUI. And then let's go ahead and start writing code and get all these buttons to work. Okay, so in our mind... You just do a sprint task list, and you start getting a list of things you have to do. If you're doing a large app, you may need to write them down. Are you with me? Okay. So let's go into GIMP. Here you go. And should we know the size of that button? What's the size of that button? 45 by 45. So we can actually go 45 by 45. Okay. Now, Android does have a scale factor. You can make it larger and scale it down, um, but we can also make it 45 by 45. So hit your control roll button and zoom it in. Let's go to Windows, new toolbox. Um, this is just a now a small uh, GIMP lesson. So you want to go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, Layers, and you want to get these toolboxes up. Okay, thumbs up if you're with me so far. Who's not in GIMP? You got to load it up, man. Load yourself some GIMP. Real quick, while we're waiting on GIMP, who who thinks the Patriots are going to win? Who thinks the Eagles are going to win? All that, and I got one vote. What's wrong with you guys? What? You don't watch football? You don't have to watch football. You can still eat hot wings. <laughs> you, you still go for the guacamole dip. You're in. All right, here we go. So I'm going to make a round button, right? So you go up here to your ellipse tool. Second one on the right. It's a little oval. Looks like something you can make a circle with. Are you with me? Grab it. Start at the top left, drag it down to the bottom right. I can make a perfect circle. Can I make a perfect circle in GIMP? Yes, that is a perfect 45 diameter by 45 diameter circle. How do I know that? Because it's perfectly inside of my square, and my square is 45 by 45. Who understands that? What? No, it's not perfect. All right, it's not perfect. Let's make it perfect. Now is it perfect? Now it's perfect, right? Can I make a perfect circle? Yes, I can. Okay, so we're going to go to my favorite tool called the Blend Tool. Double click on it. By the way, if you double click on any one of these tools, you get the tool option to open up. And you can drag these out, make them a little bit bigger so you can see all their functionality. Okay, there you go. And up here, I want to go to Gradients, and I want to go get a cool rainbow color because we're doing a rainbow today. And I want to give them all choices of rainbow colors. So there you go. Full saturation. Drag it across. Boom. Okay. That's radial. If you don't like it, you go from the center out. That's radial. Uh, you could go the swirl, the spiral. Okay. So that's what I normally do. I like that one. So you're going to go over here now to the right-hand side called layers. Everybody see layers? And you're going to right-click on your small icon. That's my small little background button. Okay. Add the alpha channel. And now I can color select. So go to your red, green, blue button over, over back on the toolbox. Select the white and hit delete. Okay. I now have a mystery button. File, export as, mystery, .png. You're going to put that into your... 
Let's go back in here to folders. We'll go to innovators and period one, digital doodle. We're going to drop it in that folder so I know where it is. We're going to export it. When you export it, let's go over this real quick. Everybody see the export image box? Make sure, very important, if you don't do this, you will have a white background. Does everyone see the very last box that say, says save color values from transparent pixels? That has to be off. And a lot of you, it will be on. So what are you going to do? Click it off, uncheck it, hit the save defaults button so that it's always off because I never use it, and then hit export. Okay? That gets exported to your folder. You now can go here to your question mark button, your mystery button, upload it, choose a file, go to documents, 2017, innovators, period one, digital doodle, and where is it? Is it in here? Oh, yes, there it is. Mr. E. And you uploaded that, and I made that in GIMP. Okay? That's my creation. Pretty cool stuff, huh? And now we're ready to code. Thumbs up if you're with me. That is a small, little, brief lesson in GIMP. Should you know how to GIMP? Absolutely, then you can make everything from scratch and nobody can sue you for using their buttons or using their graphics or using their backgrounds or using their characters or using their sprites, okay? Make everything in GIMP. And then when you post on the App Store, you, you have no worries, okay? All right, so, so as we begin to code, okay, you guys can take a picture of this with your cell phone, and you can go over to the code blocks because you won't see it anymore, and this becomes your checklist. So what I like to tell people is you have to role play the app, right? Role play the app. What button do you think someone's going to click on first here? The camera button, and what do you want to happen when the camera button? What do you want to happen when someone clicks on the camera button? Should take a picture, right? With the camera. Are you with me? And then after you take the picture, what do you want to do with it? Because we could share it to Facebook. We could share it to a file. We could share it to um, Instagram. You know, we could do a lot of things with it. We could text it to a friend. What do you want to do with the picture afterwards? Creech, why do you have a headset in, man? What are you listening to? Okay. Do I want you to listen to music today? Okay. Would it be probably better to listen to me <laughs> as I'm talking? Okay. Let's don't do headphones. Unless you're watching my videos, which you're not. So, come on. Now you messed me up. I don't know where I'm, I forgot. What were we talking about? What do you want to do after you take a picture? What do you want to do with the picture after you take the picture? Yeah. Don't we want to put it on the canvas? So do you guys see what I'm doing right now? I am doing problem decomposition right now. I don't know if you know it or understand what I'm doing, but I'm doing problem decomposition. So I want to press the camera button. I want to take a picture. After I take a picture, I want to put it on the canvas. Are you with me? So let's do that. I'm going to show you how easy that is to do. If, if you can say that in your brain, and your brain can understand that, it's so easy to code. So what I just did is the hard part. The coding's the easy part. Are you with me? So how many people thought that was hard? Was it that hard? No. Can you say, okay, I want to I want to click. So you just kind of like role play the app. You just kind of like act like I'm using the app. What do you want to do? Well, I want to, like the other app I'm building, I want people to log in. Okay, well, what am I going to do when I log in? Well, I got to find out if they're an owner or a contractor. If they're an owner, right? 
we go to the owner page. If they're a contractor, we go to the contractor page. Are you with me? I got to find out. And so I just say that stuff to myself, right? You just role play it. Okay. So watch this. What button am I going to click on? BTN take picture. I'm going to click on it. And there you go. There's my event handler, a code block that registers when the button is clicked. Was that hard? And what do I want to do when that button is clicked? What? No, we got to do something. What What do I want to do when that button is clicked? Take the picture. And what do you think takes the picture? Okay, this is a test question. I, I say it all the time. Does the button take the picture? No, the button does not take the picture. The button is like, you know, yeah, the camera one takes the picture. So the button is just saying, hey, this is what we want to do. All right. So now we're going to go camera one. And look at this right here. Camera one dot take a picture. Was that hard? Okay. And now the, here, here's probably the hardest code block of, of the whole quarter. Camera, after you take a picture. <laughs> after you take the picture, what do you want to do with it? Put it on the canvas. So now I know to go back up here and look at canvas. So I go back up here, I click on canvas, and I go through here, and I see is there anything that would help me with like putting my picture onto the canvas. Does anybody go through here and, and look? My seventh graders found it. Yeah. There you go. Does everybody see where it says set background image? So I'm going to go set the background image. And now I need this little code block right here. Well, guess what? It's sitting right here. This is a variable that registered the picture. So you want to get this image. And you just set it to the background image. All right. Boom, let's go see if our app works. Was that hard to do? How many lines of code do we have? One, two, three, four. Okay, so you're going to go to connect, reset, connect AI companion. If you've not done this before, you turn your companion on, which is your tablet or your phone. Okay, and you scan it in. You click on the MIT app companion. You scan that guy in. And we should be able to take a picture. All right, so if I click on my camera button, can I take a picture of all the pencils? There we go. I got a nice picture of the pencils. I'm going to hit OK. And does it go on my screen? Does it go on my canvas? Yes, it does. All right, so right now, let's go back to our checklist. The camera button works. The canvas works. Now what button do we need to handle? What button do we do next? What do you think is the most important button to do next? Yeah. What? I don't think we need to get delete yet. I think, you know, a user needs to do something first. What? They're going to edit it, right? They're going to color it. So don't we need to get our color buttons to work, the four buttons at the top? Yeah. So we're going to go back here. I need to get red, green, and blue to work. So, guys, I'm going to do this really quick because I'm going to show you how to copy and paste and work more efficiently. So I want everyone to stop what you're doing and just watch. I'm going to do all three of these buttons in like one minute, and I'm going to give you three minutes to go back and do it. But I don't want you to do it while I'm doing it. I want you to just watch. Hello? Can you turn and watch, please? Okay, here we go. So watch how easy this is. I'm going to click on the red button. And I want to change the paint color. And this is probably a hard thing. You know, where do we change the paint color at? Well, you change the paint color in the canvas. Okay. So you go down to canvas and you're going to say change set my paint color. 
and I'm going to set my paint color to these colors over here, and I'm going to go, hey, I want red. Okay, now watch this. Okay, that was easy, right? Now watch this. It's just, this gets even easier. Ready? Do you think green and blue would be something similar to this? Except maybe it has like a different color over here? Watch. Right click, duplicate. Right click, duplicate. Now I'm going to change this to my green button. Got to go over here to change this to my green. I'm going to go down here and change this to my blue button. I'm going to go over here and change this to my blue. Boom, I'm done. Do you see what I did? So coding is a lot about copying and pasting. It's not about generating every single code block. Are you with me? Copy and paste. If you have something that's similar, copy and paste. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes. Go ahead and do that. Go. All right, welcome back. So, you know, it took them like one minute and 20 seconds to get that done. Are you with me? Is coding hard? No, coding's the easy part. The hard part was to say, oh, okay, I got to change the paint. Where? Where am I changing the paint? Oh, I changed the paint on the canvas. Okay. All right. So once again, does the button really change the, the paint? No, it's it just calls the canvas to change the paint. Okay. Let's go do the mystery button. Okay. This one's a little bit different. That's why I didn't throw it in that last category. You're going to click on the mystery button. And yes, we are going to duplicate this. And yes, we are going to change the paint color on the canvas. But this becomes a little bit different okay so yesterday in GIMP I, I was teaching my other classes this where is that guy at let me see if I have it in here I thought I created a button where app creators what did I do with that button don't see it in there I was teaching my class about RGB values. I want to teach you guys about RGB values. Okay, I don't see it. All right, so I'll go ahead and just make it again. All right, so these are RGB values, okay? So if you guys go back into GIMP, and this is that button we just made, right? Um, so, you know, let me blow this up. I think I'm going to have to blow this up so it's a lot bigger. Let me make this like 600 by 600. Okay, we're going to go new. Boom, that's a big button. You're going to go over in here. I'm going to drag a circle. Okay, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about RGB values. There we go. Right click. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a little bit about RGB values here today. So what is an RGB? So I'm going to go get some text. And I'm going to start typing in what an RGB is. So every color is generated with an RGB value. Okay. And I'll blow this up a little bit. All right. So RGB values, okay, have a red, a green, and a blue. Anyone want to guess what RGB stands for? Red, green, blue. Okay. It's not that hard, right? Okay, so let me expand this a little bit. And I'll, I'm doing this so that it'll be on the video for you, okay, if you guys ever go back. So, so when you generate an RGB, okay, you're looking at red equals, red can be a value from 0 to 255. You with me? Okay. Green can equal a value from 0 to 255. Anyone want to guess what blue can be? 0 to 255. Okay. All right. So what is that really? Well, 0 plus 255 is 256 different number choices. Because I have to count 0 as a choice. Right? 
So zero is a choice. One to 255 is a choice. So I have 256 choices. So you have 256 times 256 times 256, which 256 is a binary number. This is all done in binary. And when we get to binary code one day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how this all sets in. So how many choices do we have? We have 16 million. 777,216 different color choices. Okay? How many people understand that? It's on the backboard. Okay, if you ever forget, RGBs, how many colors do you have? 16,777,216 different colors. Do the math. I think I did it right. All right, so we're going to go back and create one of these randomly, okay? So you go back into here, and guess what? You go into your colors box. Well, are, are these all random colors? No, but look at this. Wow, could I make my own color? Yes, I could. By the way, so let's study RGBs real quick. Who can tell me what color that is? 25500. That's all red. You with me? That is complete bright red. Because you're putting in 255 all in the red. You're not putting in any green. And you're not putting in any blue. Test question. What color is that? <laughs> green. It's all green. Okay. Test question. What color is that? Who understands RGBs? Okay. So it's just like taking red paint, green paint, and blue paint, and you mix them together at Lowe's, and you come up with these different color combinations. Are you with me? And that's exactly what they do at Lowe's. You could actually take an RGB value at Lowe's. Okay, let's go back here real quick. I forgot to show you this in GIMP. Okay. Let's go here to GIMP. Okay. When you click on this color, look, this guy comes up. See the color box? What do you see over here, right here? Do you guys see the red, green, and blue? Well, this pink color that you see right here in this box is 231, 167, 227. Could you take that RGB to Lowe's and say, hey, can you make that color for me? And yeah, they would do it. Okay, now watch this. Okay. So let's say we don't want any green involved. Well, 231, that's like a hot pink. Okay, let's say you don't want any red involved. There's your blue. So that 255 you just told me, there it is. Okay, so you guys can slide these. Okay, you can slide this guy here. So red and green makes yellow. There's your all red, right? So you guys can just click on anything in here and you get a different RGB. Do you guys see how that works? And then this is cool, too. I want you to pay attention to this. Notice this HTML notation. You with me? <laughs> Let's go back to that pink. Or hot pink. Okay. So let's say you like this color here. Anybody like that color? It's kind of cool. Okay. And that color is 201.55.192. If you, could you take a pad of paper and say... By the way, I program all the time with, with sticky notes, right? And remember, remember I said you guys should always be programming with what in front of you? Your engineering design paper and a pen, right? So could I take a pen and, and write down, okay, that's C937C0? Could I do that? Yeah, watch this. So could I go back to my designer? And do you guys see this red number right here? Watch this. Watch this R. Okay. Now let's throw in another button real quick. Okay. So can I go to this button right here and do a custom background color? Go down here to custom. And remember that number I just wrote down? C937. C0. And guess what I get? There's that hot pink that I just generated over in GIMP. So you can actually make anything in here the color that you want. 
okay, in, the, in an app I'm building for a friend, okay, we chose a color out of his, um, we chose a color out of a, a really cool design he did with a background building, and it had like a, like a Carolina blue color, and guess what it came out to be? I have it memorized. It's 7BB8DC, okay, you hit done, and there's that Carolina blue that we're using in the app. Okay. By the way, colors. Do you guys know that blue is the most common favorite color in America? What color is Facebook? Blue. What color is uh, Twitter? Blue. So you're going to notice that a lot of apps are blue. Why? Yep. Because blue is the number one favorite color in America or the world. Okay. So. I don't need this button anymore. That was just uh, uh, some fun kicks and giggles. Okay, so let's go to blocks. And now we want to create a random color here. Are you with me? So now this is simple because you understand RGBs. So you're going to go to math, and colors are generated with numbers, right? So what numbers should these run from? 1 to 100? What do RGBs run from? So you're just going to put in here 0, 2, 255. There you go. Right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate, and there you go. You just generated your mystery color. Every time they click, they'll get some random red, some random green, some random blue every single time, and you get a random color every time you click it. Was that hard? No. Did you notice the coding took me like seven seconds but the explanation of it took me like seven minutes are you with me so the explanation of it's the hard part the coding's the easy part so that's why you you got to understand what you're doing first and then you go back and code it is this cool okay so now can i paint on the canvas yet no why not you never told it to so you're going to go to canvas hold pick and drag your finger so go get your drag event. And do you notice how it has a lot of start X, start Y, previous X, previous Y, current X, current Y, all up here, and drag any sprite? Okay. All right. So up here, um, you know, you're going to go back to Canvas, and you're going to say, okay, Canvas, when I drag my finger, what am I really drawing? I'm drawing what? A line. Can everybody say that in their brain? I'm drawing a line. So now I go back to my canvas, and I look for something that draws a line. Look at that. Boom. There you go. I'm drawing a line. And it's looking for four parameters, x1, y1, x2, y2. Well, guess where I can get these x's from? Above. Do you want to go from the start x? No. You want to go from the? previous x because you you then it could be anywhere on the screen and then you go get the current x is x2 and the current y go get it it's the y2 boom i'm done could we draw a circle also yes we could so we can go back to canvas and we could draw we could have some fun here and also draw a circle the center X could be like the previous X. Center Y could be the previous Y. And now it's looking for a radius. Well, guess what? The radius is a mathematical number. So I'm going to go get a random ge number generator again. I'm going to say, okay, create me a circle from 1 to 5 pixels radius, which means I'm going to go from 2 to 10 diameter. Okay, and, and you, do you have to do the circle? No, but I'm just showing you other things to do, okay? Who's getting this? Is the coding that hard? No. Okay, so now this works. So let's go back to our button. Okay, by the way, I know all this works. You, you can test it on your app if you want, but I, I know if you did what I did, it all works. What button do we not have? What, okay, so let's go through here. Do we have the camera button working? Yes. Do we have the red button working? Yeah. Do we have the green button working? Yes. Do we have the blue button working? 
Yes. Do we have the mystery button working? Yes. What buttons are not working? Is the canvas working? Yes. So w what is not working on here? What? Erase is not working. Delete's not working. The voice button's not working. The share button's not working. Are you with me? So let's go attack erase and delete because they're very similar. By the way, do we have an accelerometer on here? Yes, we do. Yeah. So now I'm going to show you how to do procedures. And I'm going to show you how to do a couple small little things in code. Yeah. Yeah, mine's doing the same thing. I don't know why. I don't know why it's uh, – it should just be filling the parent. I don't know why it's going over – it did that to me also. I don't know why because all we do – all we have on here is still parent, right? The height's automatic, you know. Um, this guy's still parent, which I don't see a problem with. And this guy is heights automatic. I, I don't know. Mine did the same thing too, and that's really weird. I don't know why they're having problems with their layouts. Okay, so let's go do the delete button. All right, so what are we going to click on? Erase. Okay. And uh, we can go click on delete. And we can go do an accelerometer shaking. Because these are all three really the same. When you shake the app, you want to delete or erase. And then when you erase, you click the button you want to erase. When you click the delete button, you want to delete, okay? So, how does this work? This is probably the simplest code of all time. So, erase button, okay? What are you erasing? What are you erasing on? Where? The canvas. Say it loud, say it proud. So go back to your canvas, and do you guys see anything in here that could possibly help me erase? I'm not going to tell you what it is. Dot clear. Very good. What's your name again? Gage. Great job, Gage. So do you guys hear what Gage just said? Okay. Gage, great job. Was that hard? No. Gage just erased the canvas. That's all it is. Is it really erased? No. It's called canvas.clear, but can my brain figure that out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my brain can figure out, oh, okay, dot .clear, that probably erases. Okay. So the delete button, what is, what, what's different about the delete button? Yeah, so you want to get rid of the background image. So you go to Canvas, and, you know, if we wanted to, we could actually go up here where we're setting the background image. Go ahead and grab this code, bring it down, because we're going to change this background image. And Delete is really going to get rid of this background image, and it's going to go, and a background image is really, okay, so... What you could do with background, let me show you this real quick. Background images over here. Let's say you have a mic.png, eraser.png. So, you, like, it's looking for a, a, a name of a file here. So, if I would have erase.png, okay, it's going to set that to erase. Are you with me? Well, I don't want to do that. So, I just want to say, I don't want anything to be on there, so I'm just going to hit blank. And I'm going to hit a null, and then it's going to nullify any picture that's in there. It's just going to blank it out. Is that cool? That's delete. Now, do you think we ought to clear the canvas as well? You think you ought to get rid of the writing on it as well? Yeah, probably. So, you know, you go over here and you, you take, I want to clear it and get rid of the image. Was that hard to do? see how you just do this one time you're like oh wow that's not really that hard we think coding so hard but is it really no it's really not not once you do it one time okay so let's do the accelerometer 
And then I'm going to show you how to uh, do a procedure in here. Okay. So this is really what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, shaking it. No, I'm sorry. I got the wrong block here. I got the wrong block here. So I'm going to go to accelerometer, shake. Okay, do you guys see when shaking? So when you shake it, you're going to clear it. But guess what? We're, not, we're, going, to, we're going to do something a little different here. Okay, I know it's not a lot of code, but I, I want to show you how to do a procedure because they're very important. All right, so do you guys see how we want this to be here and here? Are you with me? You getting this? Okay, so what I'm going to do is... And, and by the way, you can have a lot of stuff in here, right? So what I do is I copy and paste, and I create a procedure, and I'll call this procedure, whatever you want to call it, right? I'm going to call it erase my canvas, okay? So when, when I want to erase my canvas, I'm going to go, okay, clear it, right? Same block of code we did. Now you're like, okay, well, what, what do you want to happen when you hit erase? Well, you want to call this guy right here, right? So you're just going to go procedure, call, erase my canvas. And down here, you're going to go procedure, call, erase my canvas, okay? So procedures, you can do whatever you want inside the procedure, okay? So let's do something cool here. Let's add something a little bit more to that block. Let's go to text-to-speech, okay? And let's have Siri come on and say to us, and go get a text quote box, and Siri's going to come on and say, Canvas has been erased. Okay? And now, can I have Siri say something with delete? Yes. So you come over here, delete, and you can say, delete. Delete, 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 okay, and she'll do something really crazy there. Okay? Delete, 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 D, 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 E, 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 L, 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 E, T, E. She's going to do something crazy, okay? Could we say whatever we want here? I deleted your background image. You are welcome. Dan, can I ever say my name? Yeah, I can ever say whatever I want, okay? I deleted your background image. You are welcome, Dan. Thank you, Siri. Okay, what's next? So, do we have the camera working? Yep. Do we have the red button working? Yes. Green, blue, mystery, yes. Is the canvas dragging and drawing? Yes. Can we erase? Yes. Can we delete? Yes, so all we, what do we got to do? Speech and share. Okay? So we have four minutes. Let's do a little bit of speech. I don't think we can get it done because speech can go on forever. So here we go. Click on your voice button. That's going to start the event. You're going to call the speech recognizer to get your voice. That's going to start Google Voice. You guys know when that boop comes up and it's you speak into the phone? Chase, can you take your hood off, please? And then just like before, you got to do the after getting text. Okay? And now you have to do a control if statement to figure out if they said what, if they said delete, if they said erase, if they said Mr. Richter's awesome, if they said, right, you with me? So you have to find out what did they say? How many things could somebody say? B. 
billions of different words, right? Are you with me? So this is where you can generate a lot of code. So you got to go if, and that's an if statement up here. Go to control if. Probably the most common used statement in coding in the world is an if statement. Okay? So you're just going to say something like this. If, go get a logic equal to, if the result of what they said is equal to whatever you want here, right? So go get a quote text box and said, if they say delete, delete, okay? By the way, I found out the hard way, you need to have delete lowercase. Don't put a capital D on there because Siri doesn't understand capital letters. If you would say Dan, you need to put it in as lowercase d-a-n. She does not do capital letters. Okay? So here is a great place of why we do procedures. So do you guys see the, the, the delete procedure up here? So now, instead of writing, taking all this code out, what I would do right here is just go, um, so I want to create a procedure called delete my canvas. Okay, and I'm going to take all this code block out of here. I'm going to duplicate this, throw that in there. Okay, I can take it out of here now, and I can call delete my canvas when I hit delete. And now down here, when they say delete, what can I call? Okay, so let me ask you this. You guys do this all the time. How many people dial a number in a phone and then go add to contacts? Or do you just keep redialing that number and retyping it in? No one does that, right? You don't. No one dials numbers anymore. Okay, so what we're doing here is this is like adding it to the contacts list. Are you with me? So we create a procedure, procedure that adds it to the contact list. And now when you want to delete, you just say, okay, delete my canvas. What if, let's go to the blue button and add another else if. And I'll do this real quick. What if they say erase? Then you're going to call, not delete my canvas. You're going to call erase my canvas. Boom, we're done. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. And we can finish that up tomorrow. Have a great day. Keep calm and code on.